been developing an iOS for a few years now, and I've only heard about debouncing last week. So naturally, I thought I would make a video about it. I'll summarize what debouncing is in a short example, then we'll jump right into the Swift code. A good example of debouncing is when we have a search bar and the user is typing in their search query. From our side, instead of making network requests with every keystroke the user types, we want to make the network request only at a certain point in time after the user has finished typing. Let's say our debounce method makes sure that we wait 200 milliseconds after the user stops typing. Then we would make the network request after that 200 milliseconds is up. If the user is still typing before the 200 milliseconds is up, then we will keep debouncing until our timer has reached 200 milliseconds. Debounce prevents us from making the network request until 200 milliseconds is up in this example which indicates to us that the user stopped typing and they're temporarily ready to be given a list of search results for that query. Let's jump into the Swift code. So I created an app that uses the Google Places API um, and I added a text field as our search bar and I also have a um, collection view that will be showing the search results um, for whatever search query is being uh, typed in. And so if we go to our view controller and we take a look at our view did load, um, the search field is the name of my text field. And so we're going to add a target to it um, using add target and we're going to add a method to it uh, called editing changed, uh, which is when user is typing, this method knows when the user is typing. There are a bunch of other methods, but we won't go into that. And so within our editing changed, we can add a method with NS object called cancel previous perform requests. And within that, we're going to be creating a method called debounce and we'll pass it into there. So that's where we'll call it. And then once we call perform on debounce, um, there is a delay called after delay and I put 0.2, it represents 200 milliseconds. So within our debounce method, like our debounce will only get called after the 200 millisecond delay. So then within the debounce method, it would be making the network request. This is how you would debounce for a search bar and search results. That is just one example of how you can debounce. I'm sure there's others, but this is the one way that I've learned how to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If it taught you anything new, please give me a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you don't like this video, don't hate, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.